So I've shown you how you can input sounds using a MIDI keyboard, but what if you want to record through an audio interface using a microphone and an XLR? Well the setup is a little different, um, a little more complicated, but it's simple enough once you know how to do it. So if I open up a new project, I'm given this screen here. Now instead of choosing software instrument, I'm going to click audio. And then you need to make sure that Logic is picking up your audio interface. So the name of my audio interface is this, so Scarlet 2i2 USB. So it's being picked up. It might automatically pick it up, like what mine is doing here, or you might have to select the right one manually. So if it's not showing up, the way that you can manually select it is you go click on this arrow here, and that will bring up the preferences window. And here you can change your input and output preferences. And just make sure that the one you that you want is ticked. So it will pick up audio from there specifically. So if you were to have none, for example, it wouldn't pick up anything. Now if you've got this open and your audio interface just isn't there, what I would suggest you do is shut down your computer and your audio interface, and then leave it for a few seconds. Then make sure your audio interface is connected and then turn on the audio interface first. And after a few seconds, boot up your computer and then that can fix the issue of it not being picked up if that's something you're facing. So that can happen every now and again with certain audio interfaces. I'm not exactly sure why it happens, but that's the fix um, in case that's, that's something that's happening. Um, so we may as well sort out the output option as well, seeing as we're here. Um, now you can set it to, for example, built-in output, where the output will just be your regular computer speakers or regular headphone output. Um, or if you want to route it back through the audio interface, um, where you might have external speakers connected, then you can pick that option. So one other thing I would do is check the buffer size, the I.O. buffer size. So when you're recording, you generally want to keep this um, at say 64 or 128. So the higher the number, the more latency you'll have. So right now, um, that's telling me what the resulting latency is. And if I put it to the highest one, that makes the latency worse. And when you're recording, latency is something you want to reduce as much as you feasibly can. So if you've got really bad latency, there's essentially a lag in the recording. So you might play something and there'll be a noticeable delay between when you actually played that thing and when you hear it come through your speakers or your headphones. Maybe it's like when you're playing a video game online or something and there's a lag in the connection. And that's pretty annoying, right? So if you've got lag during the recording session, that can get annoying pretty quickly. So if you're trying to sing or play something in time and you've got heaps of lag going on, you're really going to struggle. So the lower the number is, so 64, 32, the lower the lag, but it makes the program work harder. So let's say you're at 64, for example, but whenever you try and record, Logic keeps crashing with a system overload. You might want to take it down a notch to 128, let's say. Um, so you sort of have to find a suitable little compromise. But generally I think 64 or 128 is fine. Um, when you're mixing your music, you can actually stick this at 1024 to save on processing power. Because when you've already recorded everything and you're just mixing, lag is something you don't need to worry about. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this at 128. And then when you've done that, click apply changes and then just come out of the preferences window now the final thing that you want to do in this window is check you have the right input selected so for example on my audio interface I've got two inputs if I've got my microphone plugged into input 2 but I've got input 1 selected here I'm not going to get anything Everything else can be fine, but if you've selected the wrong input, it's not going to come through at all. So you need to make sure the input that you've selected here corresponds to what you're plugged into. 
If I was recording a microphone and guitar at the same time, for example, I would have one of those set to input one and the other one set to input two. And the rest of that is fine. So when you're done with that, you can click create and that will create the track for you. Now I'm gonna continue this over in the next video, part two, where I'll show you how to do a sound check, set the gain, and finally get ready to lay something down.